بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After Dr. Saleh's insightful speech I'll briefly talk about Rumi's work and recite some of his Persian poetry with English translation, inshallah. Rumi's life can be distinguished into two main parts or periods. As it was mentioned before, the first part of Rumi's life is between 1207, that's the date of his birth, to 1244. In this period, Rumi had a traditional life of a distinguished student and a brilliant scholar. And he was a lecturer, a preacher, a professor, and also in his, the peak of his uh, career, he had more than 10,000 students. He had the respect of the king and his ministry. The king and the ministers were trying to have his presence. The second part of Rumi's life actually started from 1244. In this year, the most important incident of Rumi's life happened. He met a Sufi wanderer, Shamsi Tabrizi. This incident is so fruitful for our literature that we have some everlasting masterpieces as a result of Rumi's meeting with Shams. Rumi was so impressed by Shams that he left everything, including teaching, preaching, and leading his disciples, and devoted himself to the service of Shams. The learned professor of Islamic law became a humble student of an unknown wanderer. In addition, Rumi turned to music and spiritual dancing. This was unheard of from him before meeting Shams. Rumi's students were disappointed and angry. They ascribed this transformation to the evil influence of Shams and started annoying and bothering Shams. After 18 months and 20 days, Shams finally left the city of Qunya and disappeared. This was very hard for Rumi. He went to, into deep depression, start re, um, reciting poetry, which he didn't do it before. And after a few months, he received news from Damascus or Damashq that uh, Rumi is, uh, Shams is there. Rumi sent his own son to bring Shams back to Qunya. And there are, in his divan, there are some poetry that he uh, did write when Shams was intending to leave. And inshallah, one of them I just chose, cho chosen for you that inshallah I will read it later on. When um, Shams came back, uh, he didn't stay again for a long time, even though Rumi's students promised that they were not bothering him uh, again. But unfortunately, the jealousy was so much because Rumi was totally devoted to Shams. He became an obedient servant of Shams. Whatever Shams says, he will not uh, even do um, without anything without his permission. So um, it came to, it come to the stage that Shams asked him not to read anything, and uh, Rumi basically didn't read anything. He didn't uh, went to his students. He was totally in the service of Shams, and that was very hard for some of uh, Rumi's disciples. So, and some of the story says that they killed Shams, and some says that they hurt him, and he disappeared. So all he had, um, the time uh, he spent with Rumi was uh, 18 months and 20 days first, and around one year the second time. This is a, a very amazing uh, incident that how a scholar with that caliber as a Rumi became so influenced by Shams that he left everything. And in such a short period of time, like two years and eight months and 20 days, he was so impressed with Shams that he left everything. And it is very difficult for somebody who had position, who had respect, honor, and more than 10,000 students to become a student, a humble student back, and with the intelligence of Rumi. But uh, 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 fortunately, that, was, that incident was very valuable for our literature. And uh, I can just uh, say that uh, Rumi's life, actually, second period of his life, which is the fruitful part of his life, started from 1244. And that was the time that he met, the sh uh, met Shams. And it continued to 1273. That's the death of uh, um, Maulana, or we, we call it Rumi. 
So most of the work that Rumi have uh, is produced during the second part of his life. And uh, he has uh, two major uh, poetry books. One is called Mathnavi, and second one is called uh, divan e kabir or divan -e shams He didn't even uh, uh, name the second book after himself because he was so devoted to Shams that he didn't want to even see himself in his presence. So he devoted his book to Shams. Uh, other than these two uh, books in poetry, Shams, uh, Maulana or Rumi has uh, three more books. One is uh, called Fi He Ma Fi, and that is uh, about 61 different chapters. Uh, that's his words or his lectures or his uh, preaching or his sermons that he gave. And his son or one of his students collected that work. And it is uh, translated into English as well uh, by uh, Nicholson. Uh, and uh, uh, it is called The Discourses of Maulana. And also, I think there is another translation uh, done by Arbery, one of the students of Nicholson, the greatest uh, Orientalist. The second uh, book is called Majalis Saba. That's also in prose. It's not in poetry. Inshallah, I will talk about uh, Mathnavi and also about Diwan Kabir in the end. The second book is called uh, Majalis Saba, or Seven uh, Sermons, or Seven Settings. That's seven lectures that uh, Rumi uh, delivered. Uh, in each lecture, he first uh, is reciting a saying or um, a narration of the Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he's explaining about that one. So this is also collected by his students. I have to say that other than 18 uh, first verses or couplets of, of uh, Mathnavi that Rumi wrote himself, none of his work is written by him. He was saying it, and the students were recording it, including his speeches and the uh, three books uh, which is uh, attributed to him. One was Fihe uh, Ma Fihe, and second one is Majalis uh, Saba, or Seven Settings that it's translated. The third one is his uh, letters, around 147 to some says 150 letters he wrote to different people, uh, mainly to the officials of the time, uh, for recommending something or giving them like an advice. Uh, those are also uh, collected under the name of Maktubat. However, the great work, which is um, not only famous uh, in um, uh, Farsi or Persian language, it is uh, one of the, I can say that one of the famous book in the world literature. And it's translated into so many languages. Turkish, so many translation. Uh, that is Mathnavi. Uh, it is basically a book. Uh, uh, for the first time, it was translated into English by a great Orientalist, uh, Nicholson. This book is uh, why it's called Mathnavi, because Mathnavi is a form of poetry in Farsi that uh, the couplets, uh, they are, Mathnavi means like couplets, that uh, they are rhyming uh, together. Each verse is rhyming with each other. And it, they are um, in the same poetic metric till the end. This book is, um, um, the name is coming from the farm. And Maulana or Rumi is not a pioneer in this source of uh, uh, poetry. He is a follower of two great poets. One is Sanayi Ghaznavi, around 100 years before him. He, have, he has a book called Hadiqatul Haqiqa. That's also in the same uh, uh, metric, uh, poetic metric, uh, which is called Mathnavi. And also, Another great scholar and po po poet and also mystic is uh, Fariduddin Attar in Aishapuri. Uh, Maulana uh, met him when he was very young. And uh, Aishapuri gave two of his books. One is Asrar Nama, Il Ilahi Nama, to Maulavi as a gift. So he, these two books are also Mathnavi. But in Farsi, when now, these days, when you say in Persian Mathnavi, people will not uh, accommodate anything else other than Rumi's book. Uh, because that becomes so famous, it just took the form of Mathnavi and it just basically eradicated, eliminated all the other books in the same um, poetic metric. Um, Mathnavi is a book, um, it is basically uh, the first 18 uh, verses, which inshallah I will just read it for you with the translation. These are the original one which Maulana wrote it himself. And I can say that this is the summary or the exact uh, extract of Mathnavi in 18 verses. The whole book, which is around 25 to 26,000 uh, couplets, are the explanation of these 18 uh, verses. If I can just bring an analogy, these 18 verses are the Fatiha Tul Kitab, or the Surah of Fatiha of, 
of Mathnavi. And the rest of them are the explanation of it. And the style of Mathnavi, inshallah, everybody um, can basically do a search in internet, and it's available uh, in English, so many translations in different languages as well. Uh, the, the style is that um, after this 18 uh, verses, um, Maulana is talking, explaining it, and then he's going to stories. And within a story, he's giving lessons. Within a story, he's bringing another story. So all of these stories, some of them are real stories. Some of them might be uh, the story from the history of Islam or the time of the Prophet or the companions of, of the Prophet. Some of the stories might be just a story that it was um, made by Maulana just to pass a message through that story. So it might not be a real story, but uh, there, there are messages in that one. The, the book is very important because um, in uh, Persian literature, there are so many other books written only about this 18 first couplets of uh, Mathnavi called Nainama. We have great scholars like Yaqub Charhi, one of the su great Sufi, uh, Ismail and Qarawi, a Turkish scholar, uh, Ustad Khalili, an Afghan scholar, Bahai Jan uh, Hashimi, another um, scholar. Uh, there are so many scholars that they wrote uh, books called Nainama. Nainama means that they are just explaining and uh, giving information about these 18 verses of Mathnavi. So they are writing books about only these 18 couplets. So that's why it's, it's very important. And Mavlana or Rumi, he is not a person. He is basically a culture within uh, Persian literature. So once you are familiar with his uh, poetry, especially with his ghazals or uh, uh, the um, love uh, uh, poet, uh, poems that he is uh, reciting, it is you can feel it as um, Ustad Saleh says that sometimes you can just feel it with, with your body. It will be difficult. I'm so sorry that uh, in explanation, the rhyme will be broken. So it will be the words. Like if you are um, seeing a beautiful bird, if you want to bring it in the lap and just cut it off into pieces, that spirit is gone from it. It will be just, um, I mean, it's cruel. I will not do that one anyway. But my point is that the spirit is gone from it. When you just explain about the poetry, unfortunately, especially about Farsi poetry, because it's not only the words. It is how these words are combined together, how the message and the hidden subliminal messages there, how you can read between the lines, how they are referring to different parts of the culture. So that's very important in the poetry. And unfortunately, it will not be the same when you're just reading it in another language, any poetry, because it's having a cultural background. It, it, there are so many uh, small articulations in the, in the language that it cannot be translated into the other one. So I will just, um, for Mathnavi, I'll come later to the Diwan, Diwan-e Kabir, which is the uh, love poetry of uh, Maulana. For, for, for uh, Mathnavi, I will just read the first 18 verses that he wrote. I'll read, the, uh, read it in Farsi. If um, it is a bit um, different, inshallah, you will be patient <laughs> with me. Bishna was nai chun shikayat me kunat as judai ha hikayat me kunat. Listen to the read how it complains, telling a tale of separation. Kaznaistan tamara bibridan dar nafiram marduzan nalidan, saying, Ever since I was parted from the red bead, from the reed bed, Men and women have mourned in unison with my lament. Sina khaham sharha sharha asfiraq. Ta bigoyam sharhe darde ishtiyaq. I want a heart that's torn open with longing so that I might share the pain of this love. Har kasi kudur maand az asli khish baaz joyat rozgare wasli khish. Anyone who is left far from his source, wishes back the time when he was united with it. Man bahar jamiyate nalan shudam, jufte badhalano khushhalan shudam. At every gathering, I uttered my wailful notes. I consorted with the unhappy and with those who rejoice. Har kasi az zanne khud shud yaare man, az darune man najust asraare man. Everyone who became my friend did so through their own opinion. None sought out my secrets from within me. 
سر من از ناله من دور نیست لیک چشم و گوش را آن نور نیست My secret is not far from my lament but ear and eye lack the light to perceive تن ز جان و جان ز تن مستور نیست لیک کس را دید جان دستور نیست The body is not veiled from the soul nor soul from the body yet none is permitted to see the soul آتش است این بانگنای و نیست باد هر که این آتش ندارد نیست باد This noise of the reed is fire it is not wind and without this fire you would not exist آتش عشق است که در نی فتاد جوشش عشق است که در می فتاد It is the fire of love that inspires the flute it is the fervor of love that is in the wine nay harif har ke az yari burid pardahayash pardahay ma darid darid is the comrade of everyone who has been parted from a friend it is strange pierced our hearts hamchunay zahri wa taryaq kidid hamchunay damsaz o mushtaq kidid Whoever saw a poison in antidote like the reed, whoever saw a sympathizer in the longing lover like the reed, nay, hadis raah purkhun me konad, kisahay ishq majnun me konad. The reed tells of the way full of blood and recounts stories of the passion of majnun. Majnun is the famous lover in Arabic uh, literature. محرم این هوش جز به هوش نیست مر زبان را مشتری جز گوش نیست only the senseless is uh, this sense confided only to the senseless is this sense confided does the tongue have any customer but the ear در غم ما روزها بیگاه شد روزها با سوزها همراه شد in our woe the days of life have become untimely our days travel hand in hand with burning griefs روزها گر رفت گو رو باک نیست تو بمان ای آن که چون تو پاک نیست if our days are gone let them go but you you remain for none is holy and pure as you are هر که جز ماهی ز آبش سیر شد هر که بیروزی است روزش دیر شد except the fish everyone becomes sated with water whoever is without daily bread finds the day very long در نیابت حال پخته هیچ خام پس سخن کوتاه باید و سلام the raw did not do not understand the state of the ripe Therefore, my words must be brief. Farewell. So this is the end of the 18 uh, uh, couplets that he just recited. And then after that, uh, one of his students, uh, the famous student is uh, Hisamuddin Chalabi. He's a Turkish uh, disciple of Mawlana. He was actually the one who encouraged Mawlana to complete uh, the Mathnavi because he says that there are some other Mathnavis, but we want some work that it will last for a very long time. And Maulana was reciting this one whenever he was having that special hall, as uh, Ustad Saleh says, that situation when he was uh, in that special status, he would have just start uh, reciting, and Hisamuddin uh, was writing it. And Mathnavi is the work which it took uh, Maulana around 10 years to complete. Uh, and, and this is the last, basically, the last work that he did. And that's why it is quite different from uh, the ghazals or the uh, lyric uh, that he is uh, reciting. And Masnavi Maulana is more a teacher. He is just giving lessons. But in ghazal, he is a lover. He is just putting his feeling into, into poetry and let it just uh, go. And First, when uh, Masnavi is in sixth volume, when the first volume was completed, uh, Hisamuddin's wife passed away. He was grieving uh, his uh, wife for two years. 
uh, Masnavi was stopped. So once, after two years, he sorted all of his situation. He was in a better status uh, mentally. So he came back to Maulana, and then the second uh, and uh, all the other five uh, volumes of Masnavi was completed. This is about Masnavi. Inshallah, uh, these uh, 18 verses will probably inspire some brothers and sisters that they can just go themselves if they want uh, to learn more about it. In Turkish language, uh, alhamdulillah, there are so many translations uh, of Mathnavi, not one, but so many of them. In different other languages, in English, there are so many translations in English, not only Nicholson's one, which it, it is a bit uh, old in uh, some of the English's biblical language. Uh, and that's why uh, um, I just basically uh, accepted or I just uh, selected uh, different translations and of uh, some of the uh, words I changed with the permission of the translators. Uh, but um, inshallah, um, the in internet, as soon as you say Mathnavi, you, you can see many, many of books coming about Maulana. He is probably one of the famous the Eastern or Islamic uh, scholar or poet or Sufi that, uh, alhamdulillah, in English language, we have enough literature about him. The other famous masterpiece of Rumi is the grand collection of his different style of poetry, mainly love lyrics called ghazals. The exact number of poems and the numbers of couplets in the poem uh, and the poems are not known because it's different. People are recording it differently in different manuscripts. But around 44,000 uh, couplets are included in, uh, in the Diwan-e Kabir or Diwan-e Shams, or the Grand Diwan, they call it. And this book um, is also translated into English by Nicholson, the famous um, Orientalist. And he was, uh, a very, he was um, a great linguist as well. He was familiar with Eastern languages in Arabic and also in Persian. And it's amazing that he was the one who actually, for the first time, uh, published the Farsi uh, Mathnavi as well. He corrected it and just published it. Um, so I, I uh, chose a few ghazals for um, uh, the tonight's session, and we'll see, inshallah. I will leave a few minutes in the end for the questions, if I can answer, inshallah. But I'll just read a few of them, uh, and we'll see the time, if we've got time for all of them or not. The first ghazal is uh, when uh, Shams was bothered by Rumi's student, and he was annoyed, he intended to just leave uh, Qunia. So Maulana heard about that one. He's begging uh, Shams to stay, not to go. He's saying that, Bishnidam, I have heard that you intend to travel. Do not so. That you bestow your love on a new friend. Do not so. To dar jahan gharibi ghurbat chi mi kuni? Qasd kudam khast jigar mi kuni? Makun. You are a stranger in this world. You don't need more estrangement. What heart-stricken rich are you attempting? Do not so. Ay mah ke charq zeer o zabar az baray toast ma ra kharab o zeer o zabar mi kuni makun. O moon, for whose sake the heavens are bewildered, you are making me distraught and bewildered. Do not so. Ku ahdo ku wasiqa. که با بنده کرده ای از عهد و قول خیش ابر می کنی مکن Where is the pledge and where is the contract that you made with me? You depart from your word and pledge. Do not so. چی وعد می دهی و چی سوگند می خوری سوگند و اشورا تو سپر می کنی مکن why give promises and why utter protestations? Why make a shield of vows and blandishments? Do not so. Ay bartar az wujud o adam paigah tu az khittei wujud guzar mi kuni makon. O you whose station is above existence and non-existence, this moment you are passing from existence. Do not so. ای دوزخ و بهشت غلامان امر تو بر ما بهشت همچو سقر می کنی مکن. او oh, you whose command 
hell and paradise obey. You are making paradise like hellfire to me. Do not so. And در شکرستان تو از زهر ایمنم آن زهر را حریف شکر می کنی مکن. In your plot of sugar canes, I am secure from poison. You mingle the poison with sugar. Do not so. جانم چکوره است پراتش بست نکرد روی من از فراق جزر می کنی مکن My soul is like a fiery furens Yet it sufficed you not By your absence you are making my face pale as gold Do not so چون روی در کشی تو شود مح سیه غم قصد خصوف قرص قمر می کنی مکن. When you withdraw your countenance, the moon is darkened with grief. You are intending the eclipse of the moon's orb. Do not so. ما خوش کلاب شویم چو تو خوش کاوری چشم مرا و عشق چه تر می کنی مکن. Our lips became dry when you bring a drought. Why are you moistening my eyes with tears? Do not so. چشم حرام خاره من دزد حسن توست ای جان سزای دزد بسر می کنی مکن My lawless eyes are thieves of your beauty O oh, beloved you take vengeance of my thievish sight Do not so. This is uh, one of the poetry uh, Inshallah um, we will uh, if there is time we will speak that uh, when Rumi is talking about Shams. He is seeing in Shams not only a human being. He is seeing a perfect human. He is seeing a master. He is seeing uh, the tajalli or the reflection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a person. He is seeing someone who has the attribute of God in this world. So that's why some of the poetry is misunderstood uh, in other languages, especially if it is translated, because in some of them the words are uh, outside of the norm of Sharia, sometimes you can see that one. But you have to understand his intention, his point of view, and you have to be familiar with the concept of uh, murid and murad in, in Islamic uh, tasawwuf, that how, what was the relationship between a master and a student, and what uh, the student was seeing in a master. And we've got this uh, one, inshallah, there is not uh, enough time. We have uh, a good example in this, um, um, chapter of uh, Kahf in Quran when Musa alayhi salam was asked to go and learn from a learned man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his mercy and gave him knowledge. So uh, you can go to that one and then see how Musa alayhi salam as a great prophet of God, as Kalimullah that who was spoken to and what humble way that when he's speaking to Khidr which uh, some people says or the Abdan min ibadina Quran says then you can just understand better the relationship between a teacher or a master in his, or an instructor in Islamic con uh, content. Because uh, some of the Orientalists, unfortunately, misunderstood this relationship as well, which I'm not going to elaborate on that one. Another um, famous ghazal of Maulana is uh, he's talking about um, his um, status, how uh, he's elevating from one station to another one how he's understanding the truth, how he's understanding the reality. He says, Suratgare naqasham har lahza bote saazam wanga hama buthara dar peishitu bigudazam I am a painter, a maker of pictures. Every moment I shape a beauteous form and then in your presence I melt them all away. And this is how a person like Maulana, when he was elevating from one stage of understanding the reality, the truth around him, to another one, he says that every moment I'm just going from one stage to another one. Every time I just understand the concept, and later on I just elevate from that one and just break that concept and make another one, and then just go f further and further. Sad naqsh barangizam, baruh daramizam, chun naqshe turabinam, dar atashash andazam. I call up a hundred phantoms and imbue them with the spirit. When I behold your phantom, I cast them in the fire. To saqi khumari, to dushmani hushyari, 
یا آن کی کنی و ایران هر خانه که می سازم آر یو د درنک کپ بیرر اور اسمارت انیمی اور از ایت یو هو میک ا روین اف ایوری هوم آی بیلد جان ریخته شد بر تو آمیخته شد با تو چون بوی تو دارد جان جان را حالا بنوازم این یو د سول از پورد این دیزالف ویت یو ایت از منگلد لو I will cherish the soul because it has a perfume of you. Har khun ke zaman royat ba khak tu me goyat ba mehr tu ham rangam ba ishq tu an bazam. Every drop of blood which proceeds from me is saying to the dust, I am one color with your love. I am the partner of your affection. در خانه آب و گل بی توست خراب این دل یا خانه درا ای جان یا خانه بپردازم In the house of water and clay this heart is dissolute dissolate with the, without you O oh, beloved enter the house or I will depart from it It's another ghazal that he's speaking that how, when you're making a decision, you have to be quite aware of it. You are not uh, going to, to a person like a, a false master, then you will be fooled or you will be exploited or you will be taken advantage of. He says, Dela nazde kasi bin shin, ke o az del khabar darad, bazere an darakhti rao, ke o gulhaye tar darad. Stay close, my heart. To the one who knows your ways, come into the shade of the tree that always has fresh flowers. در این بازار اتاران مرا و هر سو چوبی کاران به دکان کسی بینشین که در دکان شکر دارد. Don't stroll idly through the bazaar of perfume makers. Stay in the shop of the one who has sugar and sweetness in his shop. Well, in, in English, sugar and sweetness doesn't mean a lot. But when you say shakar in Farsi, it's not only the sugar. There is so many other things associated with. Tarazu gar nadari pas tora zuz rahzanat har kas yeki kalbe biarayat tu pindari ke zar darat. If you don't have, if you don't find true balance, anyone can deceive you. Anyone can trick out of a thing. Of straw and make you take it for gold. Nahar kilke shakar darat, nahar zere zabar darat, nahar chashme nazar darat, nahar bahre guhar darat. Not all sugar canes have sugar, not all abyss a peak, not all eyes possess vision, not every sea is full of pearls. Bene sar gar nami gunji. که اندر چشمه سوزن اگر رشته نمی گنجد از آن باشد که سر دارد Surrender yourself and if you cannot be welcomed by the friend know that you are rebel rebelling inwardly like a thread that doesn't want to go through the needle's eye چراغ است این دل بیدار به زیر دامنش می دار از این باد و هوا بگذر Hawaii's shore of Shardarat. The awakened heart is a lamp protected by the hem of your robe. Hurry and get out of this wind, for the weather is very stormy. Chutu as bad, big zashti, mukime chashmei gashti, harife hamdami gashti, ke abe barjigar darat. When you have left this storm, you will come to a fountain. You will find a friend. And there, he who will be always nourishing you and your soul. Chu abad bar jigar baashat, darakht sabz ra mani ke meva nau dehat daim darun e dil safar darat. And with your soul always green, you will grow into a tall tree, flowering always with sweet light fruit, whose growth is interior. So, inshallah, we have time for one more ghazal, and then we will, inshallah, take some questions if, if uh, the brothers and sisters have questions.
this is a famous um, ghazal, and you can find the translation in uh, internet as well. On Rohra ke ishq haqiqi shaar neist, nabuda be ki budane o ghayre aar neist. A soul which is not clothed with the inner garment of love should be ashamed of its existence. Dar ishq baash maast ke ishq haast har chi haast. Be karobar ishq bare dost bar neist. Be drunk with love, for love is all that exists. Where is intimacy found, if not in the give and take of love? Goyand ishq chist, bego tarke ikhtiar. Harko ze ikhtiar narast, ikhtiar neist. If they ask what love is, say, the sacrifice of will. If you have not left your will behind, you have no will at all. Aashiq shahan shahist, do alam baro nisar. Heech iltifat shah basoye nisar neist. The love is a king, the love lover, the lover is a king of kings with both worlds beneath him. And the king does not regard what lies at his feet. Ishq has to aashiq has ke baqi ista abad, dil juz barin mane ke ba juz mustaar neist. Only love and the lover can resurrect beyond time. Give your heart to this. The rest is perishable. On kazbahar zad bimirat gahi khazan. Gulzar ishq ra madad az nau bahar neist. What sprout up every spring will wither by autumn. But the rose garden of love is always green. On gul ke az bahar buwat khar yar oost. One may ke az asir buwat be khumar neist. Both the rose and the thorn appear together in spring. And the wine of the grapes is not without its headaches. And the sharar ha kunu dil saada shaw tamam. Chun roi aina ke banakshu nigar neist. Let go of your worries and be completely clear-hearted, like the face of a mirror that contains no image. Chun sada shud zinaqsh, hama naqsh ha darost. An sada ro zero ye kase sharm saar neist. When it is empty of forms, all forms are contained in it. No face would be ashamed to be so clear. Chun ro ye ahanin ze safa in honar biyaft. Taroye dil chiyabat kora gobar nest. In the old days, they, are, they, they were making mirrors from the uh, polished uh, piece of uh, iron. He says that if metal can be polished to a mirror like uh, finish, what will be the result of a polished heart? Goyam chiyabado na nagoyam khamosh behast. Ta dil sitan nagoyat ko razdar nest. Do you want me to say it? He says, I will say it. What will be the result of a polished heart? And then he says, no, but it is better to be silent that my beloved will not say that I did not keep the secret. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I will not uh, read another one, inshallah. But if there is any question, thank you, Chaplain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Omar, for the very nice speech about Molana. Uh, can I? Uh, can we know about the, uh, when uh, Molana met uh, Shams? How old he was? Yeah, um, he. The first meeting happened in 1244. Maulana was born in 1207. So he uh, and that happened in the late 1244 uh, after December. Uh, after uh, uh, November, because on the 30th of November, he visited Qunya. So if the meeting happened in 1244, December 1244, Rumi would have been in his late 37, 37 years old. But Shams was uh, over 60. He was a very old man at that time. And over 60, you can imagine at that time, and when the average life is probably 25, 30, an over 60-year-old man will be very old by that standard. When 
when they were meeting. But it is amazing that uh, how somebody can impress. It might not be one incident, because one incident can be as a magic as well. Somebody can just perform a wonder. He, Maulana was not an ordinary scholar that you will be impressed only with a, a wonder that it was performed. After that, when he was in the presence of Shams, he found out that there are some knowledges that you cannot learn it from the books. Like, um, especially I can give an example of martial arts that you are familiar with. You cannot just uh, get black belt to just find the book and read all the forms over there or the katas there. You need an instructor uh, that he will just train you from the beginning. Tasawuf in Islam is also like that. You cannot learn it from the books uh, because um, it is an elevation of your status. You have to be in a status. Uh, Ustad uh, Saleh mentioned a good point that if you are not in that status, uh, it will be difficult to understand it. So that's why with the work like uh, some everlasting masterpieces like uh, Masnavi, every time if you improve yourself, especially your spiritual status, when you just go to these uh, works, you can understand it better. So it's not that uh, if somebody is familiar with the language, you will go and open Masnavi and he will understand it. Sometimes it might be very difficult to get it. Sometimes it might confuse you. So that's why it's very important that to have a good instructor and especially in the ways of spiritual uh, journey to just direct you because the dangers are there much bigger than obvious dangers because shaitan can, devil can just basically pray you and then you can sometimes go even insane. It's not an easy, that's why it is very, very recommended that you have to be having a experienced instructor to just show you the dangers, show you the right path and guide you step by step. And one of them were the order of Mawlawiyah that uh, it was mentioned previously by Dr. Saleh that uh, the, what they, that's what they are doing to elevate somebody. They start from physical training and then just let them just go up and up. So thank you very much for your beautiful recitation. Okay. Um, the question is, uh, we have spoken a lot about uh, Shams Tabrizi's influence over Maulana Rumi. Was there any influence of Ator? on his poetry or on his spiritual or poetical uh, attributes? Yeah. Um, we have to understand that when there is 25 or 26,000 couplets only in Mathnavi, uh, Rumi was a very well-learned scholar. He was familiar with the literature of Islamic uh, uh, great scholars before him in Persian and Arabic. He was fluent in Arabic because Arabic was the language of, of education at that time. So uh, in, um, you can see the influence of Atar and Sanai, both of them, in the work of Mathnavi, of course. But what happened, even if he's saying the same story, because he's coming from su such a high level, that that story, the same story will be uh, mentioned in Mathnavi, but you can understand better things from it. It might not be a new story. For example, if he's bringing a story of, of the time of the prophet, like how uh, Umar was, for example, uh, or how Ali was, that story is, when he's mentioning it, he's uh, um, explaining it in a different uh, perspective. He's looking at it from different angles as well. So not only Atar's uh, influence was on him, uh, Sanai Ghaznavi, which is a great uh, uh, poet and also uh, mystic in the time of uh, Ghaznavi Empire, that uh, influenced him as well. And of course, because he was a teacher in all the previous experiences of his first parts of his life was uh, actually put in a system and it just was uh, explained in his uh, work, especially in Mathnavi. And it is, it is a book, uh, as you probably uh, are familiar with it, it is not a book about one subject. It, you cannot say that Mathnavi is only poetry or it's only mystic uh, stories. There are thousands of uh, verses of Quran which is explained there are so many narrations of the Prophet. There are, there, it is a big chunk of history of Islam. It is uh, the Rawai or the narrations of, of literature of, of uh, Farsi language, Arabic language, and even some influences of, of Turkish because he was raised in that country. And uh, one point which uh, I want to mention that today we need uh, people like Rumi because the message of love is um, a need and a desire for, for today. 
And that's not only my thing, uh, even the great scholar uh, and the great disciple or student of Rumi over so many years was um, uh, Iqbal, um, Dr. Uh, Iqbal Lahuri. Uh, and he himself says that um, Rumi actually turned in, uh, my, my dust into gold. He says, I'm one wave uh, in his ocean. And I'm just basically, whatever I'm doing, I'm just trying to find some pearls from his ocean. I'm collecting it. And Iqbal is not an ordinary person. He's a scholar. He's a philosopher. He's a poet. He's a mystic Sufi. And he's a linguist. And he's not only known in, in the East. He's uh, very, very fam famous in the West as well. So he says that uh, we need a person like Rumi today, especially now. And it's a good lesson for us coming from uh, uh, culture, which uh, especially my generation, not the younger generation who is uh, raised here. Our generation is uh, migrated from one country to another, from one culture to another. So we can bring the, the message of love, the message of Rumi to a new society. And we can just call this place home like Rumi called uh, Khunia home. It was basically a, can, uh, a place, as uh, it was mentioned before as well, not only by Muslim, it was occupied by Christian, by Jews, and uh, by Muslims. Khunia was like a mixed uh, uh, cosmopolitan city like Sydney at that time because it was close to um, the areas of, of um, Roman Empire as well. That's why it's called Rumi, because that area is called uh, Rum uh, in, in our culture. Otherwise, it, he was not from Rome. He was, we call it, in, maybe because of the nationalistic uh, views of Afghans, we call him Balkhi, because he was originally from Balkh. But um, he himself says that I am not from there or from, from here. He says, as Balkh Baru Muhammad, he came from Balkh to Rome, ne Rumi wo ne Balkhi. He's neither Rumi nor Balkhi. As Shahri Junun Barkhas, ne Masto na Diwana. He's coming from the city of, of the craze. And he's not crazy, and he's not drunk as well. And he says, Har kas bagumane khut, ora sifate bakhshi. Yak silsila diwana, yak taifa farzana. Everybody, according to their own understanding, is giving him an attribute. Some calling him a crazy person, some calling him a wise man. So people like Rumi can be a good example, especially for our young generation, to learn from his message, the love message, uh, not to go to, basically, to be disarray from. This is the beauty of Islam that he's representing. And we, as uh, migrants coming to Australia, we can call this area home, and we can spread the message of love. And everybody will basically accept it, because it is general international attributes that nobody can just uh, say that, oh, you're this or that. And he was so receptive, as uh, you, we can see in his life, that he was receptive to anyone. Even some people would have come and abused him in front of him. He would have said, yes, you are mine as well. So he didn't basically reject people. And that, that's the message that I wanted to pass. I just had a question about um, if there's any books about Shems, particularly about his life before he met Mevlana, because you're saying he was 60, so he was quite old. So what was he doing before then? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, there is a book called Maqalat Shams. So again, he didn't write it himself. Uh, it was collected. Uh, it is basically his words or his saying or his sometimes when he had a conversation. So those conversations are recorded. And it's amazing when you see it in uh, Farsi language, it shows that it is not coming from a very well-educated person. It's very common uh, colloquial language of Farsi at that time and uh, compared to something which Maulana was speaking. But um, people like that, like Shams, they called in, in uh, Tasawuf, they called Afrat. They don't want to be famous. They don't want to come to, to the stage to, that the people will follow them. And I, in, in my understanding, Shams came to Maulana because he knew that he has so much knowledge, and he, he didn't want to share it with anyone. Because some of the knowledges are so sacred, you cannot share it with anyone. And especially in a very close society, it is dangerous. Because uh, we know that some Sufis were killed. Some were, some were um, even crucified, like Mansur Halaj. So Shams, his previous life is very unknown. Why? Because there are some people they called Afrad, or, or the single people, that they will just elevate themselves spiritually to the stage that they don't want anything with fame, even though they might be very learned. And that's what happened with Imam Ghazali, if you remember. 
He was famous before, but when he was going through that journey of, of purification of his soul, he, whenever he was going to any mosque, if he was recognized, he would have escaped from it. Why? Because they, that's one of the fitness that uh, it can just basically uh, misguide you. When you become famous, um, there are so many negative uh, connotations is coming with it. The um, proud is coming with it. People's uh, praising is coming with it. Uh, so shaitan is also coming to your nafs. There are so many things in some of these people, and Shams is not the only one. There were at that time, and now even now in, in Islamic world, even uh, in the city like Sydney, there are some people that they might be very well learned, but they will not uh, come and give speech uh, and stand here like uh, me to talk about something. Unfortunately, we don't have, I, I don't have that, that elevation, otherwise I wouldn't be accepting this speech. But uh, his life is, um, except for Maqalat Shams, and very little is written about his uh, previous life. But of course, he was in that stage, and he had like a very precious knowledge that he wanted to share it with someone who was worthy of it. And he found Maulana. And it shows that he came intentionally to Qunia because he heard that there, are, there, there is some person, and some says that he might be inspired, like spiritually, that I have to give this amana to someone else, and that person should keep it. And Maulana was that one. And of course, the message of Shams is coming through Maulana in Mathnavi. If we didn't have Shams, in my understanding, we wouldn't have Maulana to produce Mathnavi or his Ghazaliyat or uh, the prose work that he did. One more question we have time for, inshallah. Thank you. Uh, Brother Omar, the uh, place when, uh, first place when Shams and Maulana meet each other, it uh, called Marajul Bahrain. Uh, then some people talking about this one and related to the uh, uh, Surah Ar Rahman Sharif, which is Marajul uh, Bahrain and Taqiyan. Uh, this is between uh, um, solid water and uh, uh, the, uh, another water, normal water, mm -hmm. and because Shams and Maulana, is, is, I don't know what's the relate between that one and that one. Uh, I can say generally, people basically, um, they can just give their opinion about um, different incidents, they can relate it to different uh, verses of Quran. But generally, I can say that much that um, the meeting, uh, the first time that they met, some says that uh, Maulana was in the madrasa, he was teaching, he was sitting too close, close to a pond, which was mentioned. Some says that he was riding the horse, and all the students were going uh, with him, and he was basically a scholar in the top of his peak uh, of his career. And then Shams just grabbed uh, his, the bridle of his, of his horse and asked him a question. It was a loaded question, and then when he answered, he asked, asked, asked him another question based on the uh, answer that Maulana gave. And that um, Maulana was totally like stopped. And so Maulana says, OK, now you gave me the answer. And Shams gave the answer. And it was in a, such a heavy answer that Maulana actually fainted and just uh, he collapsed from the horse. If that's true or not, there are so many other versions as well. Some say that uh, when he entered the class of Maulana, he sat close to the door. And then he asked a question, and Maulana thought that this um, person, he doesn't know anything, and he asking me a question, what are these? And then the answer was that uh, it is something which you don't know. And they say that Shams look at the books, and it just took fire. And then uh, Maulana says, what are you doing? What is this? And then Shams says, yeah, this is the thing that you don't know. But in my opinion, that these wonders are one-off occasions, and sometimes in the history, they want to glorify uh, an occasion. It was not only a meeting of, and Maulana was not just a, a commoner to be impressed by only one incident, a karamat or, or a, a something which happened, uh, a miracle in English language, as, as we say. He was a learned scholar. He will not be impressed by incidents like that. So that's why he just devoted himself for two years and eight months and 20 days to be a student so devoted to Shams to learn from him, not only learned something which he learned, uh, could have learned from the books, it was a practical, spiritual elevation of Rumi. He was familiar with all literature that it was written, 
but it was the time for him to just uh, purify his heart, to clear those uh, hijabs or those veils that he had in front of him. And sometimes Maulana, Shams knew that one of the biggest veils that Maulana has is the teaching. He's standing in front of a, uh, a class which there are hundreds or sometimes thousands of students, and he's the top scholar of his time. So he knew that what is the sickness of his heart? He told him, like a, like a doctor, like a spiritual doctor, he says, now you cannot speak to anyone, you cannot read any book, and you have to stay for three chella or three forty days in a seclusion. So that was basically taking him from one extreme to another to just purify him, to see whether he's worthy of that knowledge that Shams has to just um, deliver it to him. So first, he just purified him. He let him to go of everything. And his poetry is full of that one. If you go to Divani Shams, he's saying that in so many poetry that what I was and what you made me, what I was before, what you made me. I did this one, I, I was doing this one, I was famous, I was the scholar of the city, you just made me the, basically the, the story of the, of the kids, you know what I mean? So in that sense, um, it wasn't only one incident. And people can give different uh, elevation, different explanation about it. Mm -hmm.